your unique story, our global audience, Global One Media. Hello, and welcome to another episode of our Stocks to Watch series from Global One Media, where we speak with senior leaders of companies across the board to help you, our viewers, make informed and intelligent investment decisions. I am Munir Baraz, your business analyst and host, and today I am pleased to welcome Evan Gappelberg, the CEO and director of Nextech AR. A pioneering metaverse enterprise distinguished by its proficiency in delivering sophisticated augmented reality solutions, spatial mapping, and 3D models. Nextech AR is listed on the OTCQX as NEXCF, on the CSE as NTAR, and on the FSE as EP2. Hello, Evan. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Great to be here. Welcome. So can you start by telling our viewers about Next Tech AR, its mission, vision, and also share the backstory of how it all started? Sure. So our goal is to be the dominant 3D model supplier for the five and a half trillion dollar global e-com ecosystem. We started this journey back in uh, January of 2018. Uh, where I raised three million dollars. Uh, I wrote uh, checks myself and just a couple of friends because I had this idea that augmented reality, uh, AI, and 3D were going to be the next big uh, thing in technology. And so uh, we went public on the CSC in uh, Q4 of 2019, uh, and uh, actually Q4 of 2018. And in 2019, um, Apple uh, came knocking on my door and said, hey, you know, it's really cool that you guys went public but you know, it's really early for the augmented reality uh, industry. And I was like, oh, you know, that's interesting. And then I got a uh, knock on the door from Google and they invited me into their headquarters. And uh, guess what they told me? It's a little early for <laughs> augmented reality 3D. So I heard it in stereo, you know, and I was like, okay. This is not like normal. I'm going to have to pivot. And so we did pivot. In 2019, uh, instead of making 3D models for e-commerce, because it was a little early, e-commerce businesses weren't ready to adopt 3D models. We bought a couple of e-com uh, businesses ourselves. And we started to develop the 3D models for our own businesses. And we uh, learned a lot about the whole e-com ecosystem and the 3D modeling business. Uh, we also acquired a virtual event platform, uh, and uh, that was in Q4 2019. In 2020, we all know COVID happened, and everything in the stock market is about timing. We had, as we rolled into 2020, a virtual event platform and an e-commerce business. If you go back in your memory, 2020, those were the only two businesses that really counted. So our businesses exploded in 2020, and uh, so did our stock. And so if you look at our stock chart, you know, it went to $10 uh, back then. Uh, now, fast forward to uh, 2021, 2022, those businesses are now uh, gone, we, we've we sold them off. Uh, those are the legacy businesses. We doubled down and we made a $10 million investment in AI in 2021, the summer of 2021. So we've always had our focus, our eye was always on the prize, 3D, AI, and augmented reality. So we had a bit of a detour, but now we're here. And we landed Amazon in Q4 of 2022. Uh, and they are the thousand pound gorilla. They're, they are the king of King Kongs. There's nobody bigger in the e-com ecosystem. They represent 70%. You could add up Walmart, Target, uh, you know, all the other Kohl's, all the other e-com businesses, none of them together. They don't even equal. They don't equal Amazon, right? They they represent maybe collectively thirty percent of the market. Amazon seventy percent. So we are a preferred three D model supplier to Amazon today. Our business is scaling. 
We reported over 500% growth in our 3D modeling business in Q1, and we see blue skies ahead in 2023 and, and beyond. Wonderful. So you had a vision from the start and you had a lot of faith in this and you're a stakeholder and investor in this from the beginning. And um, uh, even though others told you that it was early, you still uh, continued and, and persevered in that direction, which is wonderful. Can you elaborate a bit about your services? Next Tech AR offers uh, 3D models, among others, uh, to customers for various uh, purposes. Can you tell us about those services, your customers, and uh, expand a bit about how large the market is? So uh, if you think of the, the market size, let's start there. You have five and a half trillion dollar e-com ecosystem where everything now is flat 2D photos. If you go online, you search for a product, you typically see a 2D photo. And what ends up happening is you're not sure about the size, you're not sure about the color, you might end up buying two different sizes, you know, two different colors. And then what, you know, Amazon ships it to you and then you get, you know, to try it on and you get to see what the actual color is. And inevitably you're shipping stuff back, right? So there's this huge problem in the industry of, uh, you know, returns. And there's this huge problem in the industry where there's this gap between the internet, you know, buying online and actually seeing the product and you know going to a brick and mortar store which is traditionally what what what's happened so what augmented reality and 3d models do is they bridge that gap they allow you to visualize the product try before you buy where you could bring a 3d model online and spin it zoom it uh really zoom in on on the fabric and really get a feel, a sense of confidence that you know what you're buying. And then with augmented reality, you can actually scan a QR code on screen with your camera, every cell phone, it, this works on every every phone, and pull the, the product out of the screen and put it in the room with you. So imagine a couch or a chair, you get to see it in your room, to see it in, in you know full color, and you get to see the size, and you get to make sure it fits. And all of a sudden now furniture has become a hot uh, segment of the e-com ecosystem. Whereas previously, before this 3D and augmented reality technology, nobody bought furniture online because you couldn't see it. You couldn't visualize it, right? So you had to go to the store. So new markets are opening up. We see it as a hundred billion dollar opportunity. Um, if you think about it, Amazon has 340 million products that need to be converted to 3D. We've converted roughly 25,000. Think about that. That's, you know, a drop in the bucket compared to 340 million, right? And so the reason why uh, not many models have been converted and it's, you know, a global problem is because it's very, uh, it historically has been a manual process. You have somebody who actually builds the 3D model. What we've done is use generative AI to help us to build the 3D model. And it's allowing us to scale our production at a level that we've never able to do before. And it's allowing us to really emerge as the dominant 3D model supplier for this enormous opportunity. And it goes beyond, you know, beyond the e-commerce. We just announced that we're expanding into gaming because they need 3D models for the VR games and all the, you know, the, the games that you see online that are that are immersive. You know, when you see uh, these video games, a lot of times they'll have a scene and there'll be all these uh, chairs and tables and couches in the scene. Uh, those are 3D models that somebody's, you know, having to build. We're able to supply them to the Activisions, the Take Twos, the Nintendos of the world. Just like we supply to e-commerce, we could supply to gaming and also to uh, manufacturers as well, because manufacturers are looking to move. Everything's going 3D. The bottom bottom line is the whole world is pivoting from flat 2D photos to 3D 
interactive models. It's the same pivot that happened when, if you remember, we used to have film and you, you get it developed, you know, Kodak film, right? Well, now it's all digital. There's no such thing as film. Like, you know, try and find a roll of film. Try, you know, and so that that tech has been obsoleted. The same thing is actually happening with 3D models. It's going to be uh, the de facto standard for online uh, shopping and, and visualizations in general. So the the opportunity is huge, as you mentioned, and you're catering to many market verticals. Um, could you elaborate a bit on your scaling plans? What is your growth strategy? What indicators are you using? Who are your partners? I know you mentioned Amazon, but perhaps you have other partners on the technology side or on the supply side. Yeah. So, you know, we supply Amazon, we supply Kohl's, we supply Target, we supply Dyson, uh, we supply, a, you know, 200 different brands. But as I've mentioned, Amazon is the king. They really stand alone, right? Because of all the products that they have. And, and you know, 340 million is just a huge, huge number. So Amazon is special. Let's, let's you know, now, as far as how do we scale into that, it's all going to be AI. Right now, when we started the year, if you, if we go all the way back to the beginning, you know, the, the backstory, in 2019, it used to take us over a week to make one 3D models. That's 40 plus hours, somewhere between 40 and 60 hours, depending upon how complex the model was. It used to cost us thousands of dollars to make the 3D model, which is why Am uh, Apple and Google said, you know, it's a little early because who's going to pay that for one 3D model, right? So the market was very, very, very narrow at that time. So we've made huge improvements in our capabilities. As we rolled into 2022, we were able to make multiple uh, 3D models a week. Okay, instead of one. Wonderful. Now, so what we're talking about is productivity, right? Now, today, using the magic of AI, generative AI, we're able to make thousands of 3D models a week. Think about what I said, one to, you know, dozens now to thousands. And what's going to happen is you know our ai is getting stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger and it starts to learn that's what ai does like it's reprogramming itself right it just keeps on getting stronger and stronger so by the end of this year we think that our ai is going to put us in a position where nobody's going to be able to catch us where we will be that dominant 3D model supplier for the entire, not just the e-com ecosystem, but really uh, globally. There are other players out there. Um, there's no doubt that you know uh, other players do exist, but we, we think we are the strongest as a public company. Um, we know that some of these other players are tapping out, meaning uh, they're running out of gas and, and closing shop, and we're picking up their clients. Uh, we I get calls all the time from competitors trying to sell themselves to me. Mm -hmm. And I basically say, well, what what am I buying other than your clients? Because I don't their, their tech isn't as good as ours. And so in the end, I, I say, you know, sorry, but no, thank you. And then, you know, they close shop. We end up picking up their customers anyway. So. It is kind of a, a Darwinian, you know, world out there. And uh, I think, you know, we are going to be the strongest and we are going to end up dominating uh, this very, very lucrative industry. Uh, and AI is really our secret sauce. And it goes back to what I said earlier, that we made a $10 million investment in the summer of 2021. That's paying dividends today, big time. And I'm glad you mentioned the Darwinian uh, world and, and the competition. How do you stay ahead of the competition? We keep investing. You know, uh, we, we don't sleep a lot either. <laughs> yeah, so we we invest in our technology. 
Um, our CTO is an ex Apple computer vision guy. Um, we have a, a, a dream team of, uh, you know, amazing people that work at our company. The people make this all happen, right? So it's really about the team. We, we're beefing up our AI team uh, quite significantly. We're hiring top tier, tier talent. And uh, our vision is pretty clear. And, and you know, we've been in, in this industry, as I mentioned, since all the way back in, in 2018. There aren't many companies uh, that have been around that long. So it really does give us a competitive edge. And also being a public company, being having access to capital uh, gives us a competitive edge as well. Lots of strengths there indeed. Uh, my last question is about shareholders. Is there a key message or uh, catalyst you'd like to mention that shareholders, both current shareholders and those that are on the fence right now, uh, should be interested in? There is a major catalyst that shareholders uh, should be aware of. So I mentioned Amazon's our customer. So Amazon corporate is buying 3D models from us uh, on a monthly basis. You know, we have a three year uh, contract with them. Amazon uh, Seller Central, which is where those 300 uh, plus million models, uh, 300 plus million products live and the 10 million merchants is off the market. That demand is not in the market today. They're not, not buying 3D models. Amazon does not allow their merchants to bring 3D models onto the site. Only Amazon corporate is able to do that. That is the catalyst. Amazon is going to open up Seller Central and allow their 10 million merchants to buy 3D models directly from Nextech. We're a preferred supplier, so we'll be on a short list of companies that will be recommended to, to these merchants to bring their 3D models onto the site. And we've already delivered you know, 25,000 plus. Amazon knows our capabilities. We're partners with them. We speak to them every single day. And so, you know, that is a huge, huge catalyst. That's literally uh, the opening of the proverbial floodgates. Um, and that is imminent, meaning uh, we've been working towards this uh, with Amazon for a while. I think it could happen in Q3 of 2023, which is now. Uh, it's not a guarantee that it happens in Q3. I'm not saying that's a guarantee, but what I'm saying is my best indication based on what I know and work, you know, being a preferred supplier is that uh, it, it it could happen in Q3. Yeah, that's a significant uh, catalyst indeed. And, and there is a very good opportunity in Nextech AR. Um, thank you so much, Evan Gappelberg, for sharing all of those insights with us. We look forward to sharing more with our audience. Thank you.